feed these hungry, needy Steam Deck fans. <laughs> they don't take no nonsense. Hello, people. Good mornings. Another beautiful day. Yep. Hope your five senses work. Health and strength is good or excellent. What? What's up? What's up, Steam Deck fans? You know, the Steam Deck tribe, Steam Deck nation, Steam Deck universe, Steam Deck world, Steam Deck legion. What's good? Steam Deck mob. What's happening? Steam Deck squad. What's up? And you, Steam Deck nerds, geeks, and freaks, and you investigators. What's that? <laughs> With your 32 gigs of RAM. Alright, on your Steam Decks. Alright. <laughs> okay, what do I got for you guys? Ooh, a whole lot. Mm. Especially, when it comes to, especially when it comes to PC gaming. <laughs> There's a whole lot to talk about, man. Alright, what do I got for you guys? Let's see here. Okay, mm, let's see. Alright. I was on I was on um Pharonics a minute ago, see what they see what they got. <clears throat> Went to PC games in. And I checked gaming on Linux and see what they got. Alright. But P, you know PC uh PC always got something going. Alright, what I got for you guys since I'm sitting here messing around here. <laughs> on a Friday. Alright, here's the first bit of news. The Outlast trial get fixed on Steam Deck. See? Deals, games, updates. See? All right. <laughs> Says here, uh, the Outlast trial from Red Barrels recently had a big upgrade with some big new content addition, but it broke the game on Steam Deck. Thankfully, the developers have solved the issue, so it keeps its Steam Deck verified status. Excellent. Says here, with the update that launched October 26, it works fine on desktop Linux, but... On Steam, Steam Deck, it would attempt load and just quit back to Steam Library. The developer noticed people reporting it, though, and put out a hotfix patch on October 28th to fix it. Then it says in parentheses, I've confirmed it worked again. <laughs> uh, close parentheses. It says here, uh, nice to see there, there were, they were paying attention to reports, but hopefully more pre-update testing will be done in the future. So players aren't wait waiting days to be waiting days to be able to play again. <laughs> then it says the last update add-ins program four courthouse new trials new MK challenge and fun pack orphanage and police station program uh, Geister Halloween event our second limited time event now with new exclusive reward rewards running October twenty seventh. Through November 17th, new cosmetic decoration, play program, uh, guy search to unlock uh, theme cosmetics, weekly, uh, what's that, uh, weekly, weekly uh, program playthrough, Murkoff new uh, experimental therapy, every week starting after November 17th, new sleep room um, minigame, challenge other regions in a timeless chess battle, uh, group finder uh, changes, find players. For the same trial and other options, new prescription and amps, continue your progression and unlock new pr prescription and amps, new c uh, c uh, conclusion, where will Murkoff send off, send off the Reborns, new legendary outfits available from the Reborn, players reporting tools, new tools to ensure great experience for all players, other additions, uh, improvements, balancing fixes and more, and, yeah. And you can get this game on Humble Store and Steam. It's called The Outlast Trial. Yeah, there. Can't see I never helped you. <laughs> ah, okay. All right. All right. Now, what's what's the, what's the next news I got for you, little Steam Deck nerds? Since we're talking video games here. All right. What else? Let's see here. Since we're talking Linux gaming as a as a whole here, it says your iconical details a whole new lot of Steam Snap improvement. You know, that's for these little U Linux OS users. Anyway, it says here, uh, while most people will be using a normal package for Steam on Linux, or the Flatpak, Conical continue pushing their own Snap packages. And one that needs a lot of work is Steam. 
giving an overview on some of the work done, Conical Bastin and wrote a post on the official discourse forum to go over some of it. And it says, since uh, snap packages aren't like normal packages, like flat pack, they run in a more contained environment, which places various limits on what they can do. The idea is to keep your main file system safe and untouched, but that comes with many problems that needs need special solutions. And it says here, uh, for the Steam Snap, Conical has ensured things like Proton would work properly. They, they say they have made huge strides in improving the Snap's compatibility in, the, in this respect, including allowing external drive mounts, improving video drive support, network compatibility, user file, libs, lib extensions files. If you have games on other drives, this is now supported across slash MNT, slash media, slash run media, slash ops, slash SRC, or slash home. So, so pretty much anywhere you set up a Steam library should now work. It says the popular uh, Mango HUD is now available directly with the Steam Snap 2, so you can easily use Mango HUD percent sign command percent as a launch option on games to get it game mode from feral interactive has also been bundled too so you can use uh, game modder game mode runs game mode run percent sign complete percent sign like above which requires changes in game mode itself which has been merged into the project this says uh Lots more work was done, like significant improvement to controller support, debugging tools, various smaller issues being solved. Eventually, it should work just like normal Steam package, but have everything it needs in one snap package that would run across various versions of Ubuntu and other distros while having having better security for the whole system. Yeah, you Linux gamers are getting spoiled. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, all right. What do we got? What else we got on this for you guys? Since we're talking, see your uh, what's this? Warzone, Warzone 2100 4.040 beta brings new high quality terrain. And we're not talking a Warzone off uh, Call of Duty here. <laughs> it said, ah, what a classic! Warzone 2100 is a classic. Is a quality real-time strategy game that was originally full per, a, was originally a full proprietary commercial release from '99. That's nowadays free and open source, and it only keeps getting better. The developer keep it alive in open source release. Just put out the first beta for Warzone, Warzone 2100 4.4.0, bringing with it some graphics improvement. Along with various other fixes, the game now has a high quality option for terrain, which include bump and spe specular mapping, instance rendering support for more performance, initial support for cascade shadow mapping, and major improvements for classic model geometry issues. Yeah, <laughs> that's for you Warzone lovers. Let's see what they got on what they got on the list here. Uh, here's the updates. Uh, Let's see, uh, there is also a new graphical user interface, plus bug fix, balance improvement, and some multiplayer improvement, uh, like <clears throat> new options for handling player resource on leave, distribute to, t distribute to team, evenly split the departing player resource among any remaining team members, destroy classics, the classic behavior, all resources are destroyed when a player leaves, New pre-game, waiting for player screen, better view of players, spectator, loading status, plus animated countdown, add team strategy view, team strategy enables sharings with your human teammates, your plans for research, and unit types without l language barriers, av available via both pre-game team planning, if in-game with human team, and in-game via intelligence screen and quick chat in lobby and in game 
And it says here, quick chat provides a series of categorized chat, chat messages slash phrase, which can be easily sent with either one click or via quick keyboard commands. Quick chat message are automatically displayed in receivers language and thus once translations are updated also provides an ability to bridge language communication barriers and then it says your quick chat uh, team message sent quick chat team message are sent via secured net message between teammates yeah <clears throat> you guys are good all right now what's the, what's the other what's the other one we got for you little steam for, for you linux gamers what do we got Alright, let's see here, what else we got for you guys? Oh, okay, KDE Win may gain early HDR support for gaming. <laughs> you guys are getting get updates, man. For you KDE lovers, it says here, while HDR support is still not really there yet on Linux, there's a lot of movements on it now, and plenty of it thanks to Valve and works on game scope. But it seems KDE Win may gain early initial support for it developer Xavier uh, hugs in a uh, put in a merge request title as support for playing HDR games that notes this use a protocol that cuts down from the upstream uh, proposal so that we can merge it quickly and see it for more extensive testing for playing games until the upstream protocol is merged and then it says, seems like a good idea to get an initial implementation in so people can actually do some proper testing and gradually build up the support for it on Wayland since it's an open merge request. It's not yet official part of KWIN and likely needs more yes on it to check it over, but it does include instruction on how to test it for those of you who really want to get in early copy below all right so yeah you you little uh kde users got it got you got your little info hdr support oh yeah you gotta have hdr especially in today's time <laughs> yeah gotta have it graphics is graphics is, it means a lot in today's world okay Let's see here. Survival Vintage Game Story has another big tech upgrade coming. <laughs> Alright, what game is this? Survival game. Alright, let's see here. What are they talking about? Let's see here. Um, Vin Vintage Story is a challenging open world survival game inspired inspired by eld-rich horror themes. Cen cen certainly quite different to a lot of survival games out there with some really impressive depth to the mechanics and it's about to get much more impressive says the developer detailed the release of v1 19.0 pre 1. djank redux the first testing release of the upcoming major update with their plans to have this release focus on polishing existing mechanics and expanding them to make the game look and feel better as a whole as they say they are challenging the status quo of what this game engine can do so basically they're pushing the game engine to, the, to its limits <laughs> says some of the tech upgrades includes mini dimension system there is now rudimentary support for world chunks to be rendered into the game world of independent of their position in the standard map system in the long term this should allow multi-block vehicles and other wicked mechanic uh, shenanigans as a first proof concept when importing schematics. Okay, then they got unlimited textures and um, the text for blocks, items, and, and entities are no longer limited to a single texture atlas. Therefore, mods which add a lot of new textures should never run out of texture atlas space again. <laughs> New first person mode, rare animation support, animation system version 2, connect textures, uh, chat, com chat command, code rights, uh, world edit command, consistency overhaul, uh, 
the chest link system upgrade. Yeah, this game is getting a lot. Hmm. It's called Vintage Vintage Story. So these are the updates that they're at, they're adding. Yeah. And what's next? All right. Let's see what else we got. Mm. What else we got? What else we have? Let's see here. Cinnamon 6.0 for Linux Mint. 21.3 to have experimental Wayland support. Hmm. Okay. It says here finally all the pieces are coming together for Wayland to truly be the actual future for Linux. Even Linux Mint are now moving forward with it in their cinnamon. News come from their October 2023 overview post, which amongst other things gave mention of their new Wayland work mint. Clem notes works status on Wayland and that it is one of the major challenges our projects had to tackle in the mid to long term. They have cinnamon running on Wayland now too as a as shown in your screenshot. Yes, yeah, something to keep in mind though is with Linux Mint 21.3 release coming, it won't be the default session. And they don't expect it to be default anytime soon, but they want it finally be ready. So it will be included as an experimental option that you will be able to pick up from the login screen. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, man. <clears throat> Wayland is getting a lot of improvements. <laughs> yep. Anything else on this? Da, 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 da. Uh, oh, yeah. They said they set up a tri trailer board you can follow on the progress and they don't think Wayland will be fully re ready before 2026 so they're giving themselves two years to identify and fix all the issues as they continue to work on it yep which also means that you can send your your feedbacks to them too <laughs> anyway all right what else we have for you little Linux gamers all right Steam VR beta continues improving on Linux. Let's see what else did they add to this thing? Deals, games, and updates. All right, Steam VR. Now that Steam VR 2.0 is officially out, Valve has continued to push out beta release with improvement, and the Linux situation with Steam VR seems better too. In the Steam VR beta 2.0.10 release notes. Release Valve noted these improvements. Steam VR, a fix for iVR I, I virtual display interface, fixed binding user interface crashing when saving a binding. Linux, fixed shear IPC compositor init fail error report by the Steam client on startup. Fixed room setup not launching on the system. It says, and thankfully my testing valve index on Kubuntu 23.10 today, the new user interface does finally show up, and the annoying 3.3 error has also gone as well. So we're going, so we're, so we're a big step closer. Some issues still remain, like the color being flipped is very brown, and the Steam Store section was just a blank page, but it's getting there now. Yeah, more improvements to be done on Steam VR, so I'll keep you posted on it. Hmm. All right, what else we got for you, little Steam Deck fans? All right, let's see. War, War Thunder game engine, Dagger engine from Gaijin now open source. That means that means that means uh, uh, more developers can um, can add can join on improving War Thunder, so to speak. Hmm. Said so here, this is a huge surprise, but a very welcome one. I have not seen any official announcement, and they seemingly did it very quick, quietly. But Gaijin Entertainment has open sourced their Dagger engine used by War Thunder. So it appears a few days ago on their official GitHub account, and it includes tools and samples to go along with. Not only that, but this is proper open source tool under. BSD3 clause license and it says documentation as a whole is pretty much non-existent for it for it so far but now they've done the initial drop hopefully that will extend upon
because all it does right now is include build instruction. Currently there only includes instructions to build it on Windows, but no doubt but now but no doubt now it opens someone will sort sort it for Linux. It's always only a matter of time when this sort of thing happens. Really great to see more gaming companies embrace open source, especially so when it's used by one of the most popular games around with War Thunder consistently in the top list on Steam at the time of writing <laughs> for most players online. Gaijin have a bunch of other projects on their main GitHub organization too, like Dayscript, a high-performance statistical type scripting language, and Quarrel, the Gaijin Entertainment Dynamic Script Language, along with other projects. Well, open source is getting bigger and bigger. And Gaijin Entertainment, yeah, I mean, that, uh, What's the name of this company again? Uh, Gaging Entertainment is joining the party. Yeah. <laughs> so open source is the, the thing, you know. Even Microsoft now is over is attending the Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu uh, Expo that's happening. I think November third through the fifth, and they're going to be seeing what the open source community is talking about. You know. So yeah, open source is the new thing now. It's getting bigger and bigger. But other than that, that's all the news I got to report on the Steam Deck and Linux Gaming. Yeah. Keep you guys posted and up to date on what's going on. Um, probably, I'll probably go over PC games in and see what PC games in and see what they what they have. If I find anything, I'll let you know. But other than that, yeah. Steam Deck is moving. Today is what the first? Oh, the top twenty um, the top twenty games for the month of uh, of uh October should be out today. Let me go find that list. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Nice talking to you people again. Chris, still a Star Wars and Star Trek fan. Or Dark Side. Go. Peace.